Hi everyone and welcome to a new video on the CBI channel. In this tutorial series we're creating a full stack application using Python Django as our backend and React.js on our front end. This is not the first video in this series. In the last video we've already started by setting up our Python Django backend. In the videos to come we will also look at page navigation with React Router. Uh, creating a navbar with menu items using Material UI and also creating a basic CRUD example that shows you how the front end can communicate with our back end. But the focus of this video is creating our React.js front end. And we're going to do that by following five steps. We're going to start by creating our React.js front end app with one single command. Next, we're going to inspect the folder structure that that command has created for us. We're going to be adding a components folder so that we are ready to uh, populate that in the upcoming videos. And initially, we're going to make sure that React can communicate with our Python Django backend by installing Django course headers in our backend and changing some of the settings in our settings.py file inside of our Django backend. So let's get started with the first step towards integrating React into our Django application. You can recall from the previous video that we've created a back-end folder for our Django code and a front-end folder for our React code. Now, actually, I'm going to delete this front-end folder for now. Um, and I'm now going to open my terminal because we're going to create our React app directly right now from the command line. And we're going to do that with the help from Create React App. This is a very simple uh, way to set up your React web application. You can do everything by just setting up one command and it's already provided here you simply use mpx create react app and then the name of your application and then we are all good so i'm going to copy this command and i'm going to paste it in my terminal but instead of calling it my app i'm going to call it front end in capitals uh, because it's consistent with the way the rules that back end so i'm now going to click enter and let's see what happens and what happens is that I cannot create a name with capitals. So I'm just going to do this again and just call it front and lowercase. And I'll be back with you once everything has been created. All right, and the code has now successfully run. And we can see that a new folder called front end has been created inside of our project. So let's go into it and see what is actually there. When we open it, we see three main folders. First one is uh, node modules. And this folder contains all of the uh, packages that, we got, that we're using during development. Um, so this just holds all of the relevant packages that we installed with NPM. Next, we've got a folder called public. And you should see this as a folder that stores all of our static files. So you can see that it uh, holds images, it holds uh, our index.html file, and also our fav icon file. So this basically holds all of the static files during development. The source file is the really interesting one for development because this is where we are going to develop our application. And currently you will see an app.js file, an index.js file, and some CSS files right here. Now later on, we're going to make quite some changes to this uh, source folder so that we can use it as efficiently as possible. On the bottom, you also see a few other supporting files such as a git ignore file and a package log and package.json files. Now, the first thing that I'm now going to change is I'm going to change this folder name backend because I want it to be lowercase as well. And the next thing we'll do is actually start our front end server and see um, yeah, what it looks like. So you can already see on the bottom here that uh, we have successfully created it and that we can run several commands. And by using npm start in the front end folder, we should be able to start our development server. So I'm going to cd into frontend because that is where all of those files are going to be. And next I'm going to run the command npm start. And this is going to spin up my local server. All right, and our server has now uh, started successfully. And you can see that uh, on your local computer, you can go to localhost 3000 to get to your application. And when we go to localhost 3000, you can see that our application is up and running. And it also states that we need to edit our app.js file and save to reload. So that's exactly what we're going to test out here. Um, I'm going to go to source because that's the most important one and go to my app.js file. And here you can see edit code and save to reload. So if I 
changes to changed code. And I save it. And when we are back in our local server, you can see that it now displays changed code. And this is kind of how React works. Now, currently, all of the uh, code inside of this project uh, is done in a function called app. But for our next step, we're going to create a new folder called components, where basically all of our uh, JS files are going to live. And the app file is going to function as a place that conditionally displays different JS files based on the URL. So one of the first changes that I'm going to do is I'm just going to completely delete everything that is in here. And what I'm going to do is just have one simple div that is going to say this is our application. And I'm just going to delete on the top line the logo statement. And when we go back, it now looks like this simple page called our application. And in the next video of this tutorial series, I'm going to show you how we're going to use our app.js um, file to display different files based on the URL. What we can already do is create a new folder called components inside of our source folder. Because what you typically do in React.js is you create uh, smaller components, uh, which you can then use in your different uh, JS pages. And this makes sure that you can reuse them. Now, one very important thing, and it's one of the final steps in this video, is going to be the communication between our front end and our back end. If I open another terminal right here, next to what we already have, and I cd into my back end folder, and I also activate my virtual environment by doing venv slash scripts slash activate. And then I go and start the server by doing python manage it by run server. We will get to see this server address for Django. And this is on the local host 8000. But you know that on our node, it is the local host 3000. So our Django backend and our React frontend are completely decoupled and there's nothing, uh, there's no connection between them right now. And we need to make sure that our backend will accept the calls from our frontend. Um, and to do that, we need to change some of the settings in our backend. And before we can uh, make the change to our settings, we first need to install a package called Django Course Headers. And Django Course Header is going to help with the communication uh, between two different domains. Because as you just saw on my local computer, our Django domain is on localhost 8000 and our React.js code is on localhost 3000. Also, when you deploy these applications, they're likely going to be on different uh, web addresses. And you need to indicate in your backend that it can receive calls from different domains. You need to specify those. Back to our Django code, we need to go to our backend here. So I'm going to go to my terminal that has the backend uh, all set up. I'm just going to stop the server. And we're going to do pip install Django course headers. Now let's check one more time if that's correct. Yes, it is pip install Django course headers. All right, we've now installed Django course headers. So let's see in the documentation what we need to do to get this to work. Well, one of the first things we need to do is the installation, which we've just completed. Uh, the next thing is we need to add it to our installed apps. Um, so I'm just going to copy it here. We need to add course headers to the installed apps into my settings. So we're going to go back to my settings at by file. And here under installed apps, I'm going to place it right here. I'm going to include course headers. And the next thing that we need to do is we need to add a middleware class item uh, to listen in on responses. So you can see that it puts course headers .middleware .course middleware on top of Django middleware .common, .common middleware. So I'm going to copy this one right here. And it also specifies that the course middleware should be placed as high as possible, especially before any middleware that can generate responses, such as this one. So we're going to copy the course headers that middleware that course middleware, and we're going to put it as high as possible in our middleware. So back in our settings under middleware, and there I'm just going to put it as high as I can.
because that is what they prescribe. And then we're over to the configuration. Um, and we can configure the behavior in our Django settings. We must have at least one of three settings. So we must have the course allowed origins or course allowed origin rejects or course allow all origins. Well, I don't want to allow all origins. Um, so that's one I'm definitely not going to be using. What I typically use is the course allows origins. So um, I'm going to go back to my settings file and I'm going to go down a little bit here. And I'm going to specify my course allowed origins. And in here, I can specify all of the URLs that need to be uh, communicating with my Django application. And in this case, that is only going to be my localhost 3000. So I'm going to go to my running server right now and copy the URL from here and just paste it in between the parentheses and save it. And now my URL is listed in the backend and it should be able to communicate with my Django application. And I am sure that there are many other things that you can configure using Django course headers, but for now, this is all we need to continue the development of our full step application. And that is going to be it for this tutorial. In this tutorial, we have created our front end React application. Um, we've taken a look at what is provided and what each of the files in here do. We've modified our app.js file so you know where some of the changes are made. And we already created a components folder. And lastly, we made sure that our front end and back end code can communicate with each other by introducing Django course headers. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, I hope I will see you in the next video. And please subscribe if you like the content. Thank you and bye bye.